When I saw the first Surface Studio, I had a visceral reaction to it. It was unique, beautifully designed, and it was something that I wanted even though I had no use for it. I just wanted it in my office. I think when anyone I knew saw that first commercial, not a single person wasn't intrigued. And also because of the way the commercial was filmed in a very different way from Microsoft's normal ads we were used to seeing at that point, some people even went as far as to ask if it was a new Apple product. And Microsoft, at that time at least, should have taken that as a huge compliment, whether they wanted to or not. The thing is that for the first time in a long time, Microsoft made something that was not only beautiful, but it and the commercial appealed to something beyond practicality. It appealed to our emotions as a consumer, something that Apple has normally been known for in their advertising and probably why people drew that correlation. Since then, Microsoft its Surface line, in my eyes at least, have tried and in a lot of ways succeeded in carrying this on. And I would say their sales figures of the lineup would corroborate my thoughts here. And I didn't buy Surface Studio for one simple reason. As much as it preached being a creative's tool, the hardware was just not powerful enough for me to edit videos on. But Microsoft finally changed that with the Surface Studio 2. But we'll get to more of that in a sec. Now they were kind enough to let me borrow Service Studio 2, so I figured I'd try to do one of my complete walkthroughs on it. If you guys aren't familiar, a complete walkthrough on my channel is where I try to go through every feature I possibly can on a new device so that you guys are better prepared should you be in the market to actually buy one. And with that said, there is a ton to go through, so let's get started with the styling. The first thing you notice is, of course, this massive screen. It's a 28 inch 4500 by 3000 3 by 2 aspect ratio touchscreen. It's supposedly 38% brighter than the last Surface Studio and 22% more contrast thanks to a new liquid crystal tech that Microsoft has employed on the new display. This essentially better lines up the crystal with the polarizer which lets more light through. That screen sits on a hinge that Microsoft calls their zero gravity hinge based on the fact that you can easily push the screen from its more traditional upright position to the signature drawing board position with just one hand. And I have to admit there's something mechanically satisfying about pushing it down. The idea is that while in this position you can use the surface pen and or the surface dial on the screen as well as your hands of course to do things like sketch, edit photos, etc. Above the screen we have our 5 megapixel 1080p video camera and that is Windows Hello compatible, so you can sign with your face if you want. The camera, along with the dual microphones, looks and sounds like this. Below the screen, in addition to those dual microphones, we have dual Dolby Audio Premium Stereo 2.1 speakers that sound like this. On the left, we have nothing. On the right, we have our volume buttons and our power button. On the back, on the base, we have our ports. We have four USB 3.0 ports, with one being a high power delivery port for fast charging devices. We have an SD card reader, one USB-C port, a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, and an ethernet port. The device itself also weighs up to 21 pounds based on the configuration, which sounds heavy and is, but for a computer meant to be pulled up and down and drawn on, I think the weight is important to make it feel stable along with the non-slip dots on the bottom of the base. The Surface Studio 2 comes with a keyboard that is backlit and Bluetooth enabled, so it doesn't use up any of the USB ports as well as a Bluetooth mouse. Now it's the standard Surface keyboard, which some people have praised, and the Surface mouse that you can buy as standalone accessories for your other Surface products, or any computer for that matter. The keyboard has good travel to it, it's full size with a number pad, and is also designed out of the same materials as the base, so it has this nice clean look and matches well of course. Powering the computer, we have an Intel i7-7820HQ processor paired with the choice of either 16 or 32 gigs of RAM. And here's where I got really excited during the announcement, a GTX 1060 or a GTX 1070 NVIDIA GPU. Because of all that, it can finally let me use Premiere or DaVinci to edit my 4K footage on without any issues. And for those interested in benchmarks, here is what I got with some of the most popular ones out. Now unlike other Surface products, the Surface Studio 2 comes with the Surface Pen, and this can be magnetically attached to either the left or the right side of the screen. And finally for storage, we have the choice of a 1 or 2 terabyte SSD. Which brings us to the software. 
The Surface Studio 2 is running Windows 10, and since it comes from Microsoft directly, it doesn't have the plethora of bloatware we usually see. Instead, we have our usual Microsoft programs like Office, Minecraft, and some other games that are pre-installed, but you can easily uninstall them by right-clicking on them in the Start menu and hitting Uninstall. Now for the bit that hurts a little, the price. It starts at $3,499 for the one terabyte GTX 1060 model with the 16 gigs of RAM, $4,199 for the one terabyte 1070 model with 32 gigs of RAM, and $4,799 for the two terabyte 32 gig GTX 1070 model. And now that does sound like a lot, but if we compared it to a comparable iMac Pro, it's on par, if not a bit cheaper. And that's really it for this walkthrough, pretty quick. Um, I'm excited to kind of test this thing out and do a couple more videos on it while I have it. I kind of don't want to give it back, but that's okay. Uh, I will if they force me to. Um, but yeah, there you go. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Let me know what you guys think of this video of the device in the comments below. Also, if you have guys have any other questions or anything, you can find me on a whole bunch of social networks at The Unlocker with an E missing in the word unlocker. Also check out other photos and videos and behind the scenes and travels and all this other fun stuff if that's something you're into. Also, if you're not already, please subscribe to the channel and check the bell next to the word subscribe so you can notify when I do new videos. As always though, regardless, thanks for watching.